At the heart of the Hayes Caldwell Women's Center is the safety and well-being of children in our community. In 2021, HCWC served 783 children and youth. This year, we're scheduled to double that number. To help meet that need, we have seven trauma-informed therapists across three programs who provide services in our Lockhart and San Marcos locations, both in person and virtually. Everyone deserves a childhood free of abuse and trauma. For those that have experienced abuse, our child services are essential. We're able to offer safe spaces for children and youth to process their trauma and to begin their healing journey. Stress can be very overwhelming for a child, especially a child of physical or sexual abuse. I had a seven-year-old boy whose siblings and mother escaped from a very violent and abusive household from another state in the middle of the night and started services with us. He experienced uh, large amounts of aggression in his home life and his school life. He had difficulty focusing and concentrating in class, and mom oftentimes would receive a lot of calls from the principal about his behavior at school. One of the first things that I wanted to do in working with him was to establish stability and routine, because that was something that he lacked so much of in his home environment. Over the course of our time together, he was learning to be mindful of what he was feeling in his body, how he was expressing those feelings, what feelings were, and eventually learning how to cope with whatever feeling he was feeling in that moment. So really working on building that list of uh, skills for him. What was hopeful for me to see in our time together was that he was implementing what we were doing in our sessions outside of our time together. He was talking to his teachers about what he was learning. He was showing his mom to help him uh, learn to self-regulate for himself. Um, and in that time, uh, I really got to see him learn to express with his words what he was feeling instead of using his fists, further showing that he was breaking the cycle of violence. When children come to HCWC, they've often experienced some type of violence or abuse. And when a child goes through that kind of experience, they often try to cope with it in the only ways they know how, whether that's fighting at school or self-harming or just being completely shut down and withdrawn. They're often judged for these behaviors that here we see as a sign of trauma. It's important to provide a space that feels safe and supportive so that they can ultimately heal and move on from those experiences and to empower them. When we empower kids to be kind to themselves and to focus on their mental health, we tend to see better outcomes. Um, lately, I've had parents who are interested in getting therapy for their kids say, you know, not only do I want my kid to be in therapy, but my kid wants to be in therapy. My kid is asking for this safe space to process what they've gone through. And it can be incredibly hard to see a child want to fight everybody at school or harm themselves or in more extreme cases not want to live anymore. But what makes it worth it is knowing that there is this space that exists for them so that we can ideally have them thrive instead of just survive. Often at Roxanne's house, this is the first time that teens have the opportunity and feel safe enough to talk about their abuse um, and what they've really been going through, their mental health struggles. Uh, we have to really work hard to make a safe place where they feel comfortable doing that um, and being flexible is crucial. That might mean being flexible by meeting them where they are physically at school, virtually. Um, we've gotten really creative with educators and other people that sometimes find unusual spaces to hold sessions with clients, um, if that's what we need to do. The other side of being flexible is 
um, getting informed on the things that are really important to them right now, different trends, um, maybe in social media or with their peers, uh, but showing them that connection to both their struggles and their interests that we are here to support them with counseling um, throughout their healing process. Being a teen is hard and when you add the experience of abuse to that, um, these these teens face a lot of barriers, they face a lot of struggles um, that without intervention might follow them throughout life. So it's super important that we're able to provide counseling services at this time in their life and really join them at that point. Um, I'm super proud of the work that I do here at HCWC with the teens and um, I'm so inspired by their their resiliency and their growth in counseling and seeing um, them kind of make these changes in their mindsets that help them um, in their healing is really inspiring to watch um, and I'm really thankful for that opportunity. One in three teens will experience some form of dating violence. And when they come to me, a lot of them are getting into some of their first dating relationships. And a lot of them don't have the best examples of what a healthy relationship looks like. So oftentimes they're relying on social media or their peers to learn about relationships. And there can be many misconceptions online about what's healthy and unhealthy. And so with me, they can have a safe and non-judgmental place where they can just talk and ask questions. And one of my favorite parts of my job is doing groups with teens because we can play and talk and they really work on increasing their self-esteem and building confidence and empowering one another. And something that I noticed is they really take the information that we talk about in group and they spread that message with their friends. And so really they're creating the change within their generation all by themselves.